Cool. So thank you everybody for being here today uh, on this lovely uh, thundery London uh, sky that's going on outside at the moment. So I'm Kimball, I'm a visual artist. I work with maps um, and the idea of layering, both from a practical perspective in terms of layering um, physically with, with visual art, in terms of making layers in, in paintings, for instance, but also um, in a metaphorical way in terms of thinking about the multiple layers of reality that exists in a place. So I was working last year on this Camberwell mapping project uh, with the Camberwell Arts Festival, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about my practice in general, how I work with mark, ma mark making, uh, map making and storytelling. So I'm going to show you some examples from some other projects. But before we do that, I would like to invite you to participate in a short drawing exercise. Uh, so if you don't have a piece of paper or something to draw with, then do grab one. Um, and it doesn't have to be, this is, we're not making sort of great art here. We're, we're really just making, this is really an exercise. Um, and uh, we're going to be drawing with our eyes closed. And the, the idea behind that is you're going to be less precious about your drawing. Um, and we'll be using our mind's eye instead. So when you're ready, take your piece of paper and your pen in front of you and um, close your eyes. So imagine a place in London that's personally significant to you. It could be a place that you know very well. It could be a place where, you're, where you grew up. Um, it could even be the place where you are right now, but try to think of somewhere um, in London that uh, is from the past uh, and I'm thinking about London because this is layers of London but you know um, this could also be somewhere else if you're if you're listening to this from further afield so imagine the, the, the place uh, a place from your memory um, and with your eyes closed draw the floor plan as you remember it thinking about the, the outline of the room, as if you're looking at this room from above, where are the, the edges of it? Where are the walls? Where are the doors? And as, you, and as you visualize the room, drop yourself down into it, as if you're the little yellow person from Google Maps going down into Street View, and try to visualize that space. Try to think of specific details that might be in that room. Is there a bed? Is there a sofa? Uh, are there windows, picture frames? Um, and try to, try to draw them as if, as if you're in that room. But keep your eyes closed. Uh, and then potentially you remember some, some objects, um, plants, bookshelf, books. Maybe you remember some textures. Was there a hard floor? a soft carpet and just just mark these things on with the, with the pen on the paper and perhaps you you might even look outside of the window if there's a window and what can you see outside of that window what was there is there a tree are there buildings and just the first thing that comes to your mind, just, just jot it down very quickly, just with a mark, with a dash, with a, with a scratch, and not going into too much detail. So once you visualize that for a bit, you can open your eyes and look at your drawing. Now, uh, I, I can't see your drawings, obviously, because I'm the one sharing the screen. But um, if you want to, you can take a photo of it and upload it onto Twitter. And but please tag uh, Layers of London and myself uh, so we can find it. Um, but if you don't want to share it, that's also fine. Um, but essentially, the drawing that you just made is, is sort of like a trace of a journey with your mind's eye. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking about uh, today. This, this idea of a journey with your mind's eye through a place that you know. And this is kind of like a map, but rather than it being a map from above, it's more like a map from within. And I wanted to show this as an example of how the, the, the process of making marks on paper while thinking about a place can be a way of metaphorically traveling to a place beyond the here and now, as a way of asking yourself what's significant about that place and what details you remember about it. 
the image you can see on your screen at the moment is an example produced during a workshop that I led uh, following a similar task as the one that you've just done, uh, except that this was actually made by two people drawing at the same time on the same piece of paper. So it's the combination of two people's memories of two different places. Now, this exercise actually involves two people both imagining a place that's, in, that's personal to them, but rather than drawing it by themselves on a piece of paper, draw it onto each other's hands. So there's a sort of sensory element to it. And I don't want to dwell on this too much because I could talk for, about this forever, but basically you try to imagine the back of your hand is like a touch sensitive screen or like the trackpad of a laptop and it, your body and mind are like some hybrid human version of Photoshop. So you're feeling something on your hand and your other hand is, is drawing that trace. Um, the person who's drawing becomes a sort of scribe for the person who is visualizing their memory. Um, and one of the things that I find interesting about this is the fact that you're not drawing your own memory um, and it means you have no control over how the drawing will look. The drawing becomes a byproduct rather than an aim. Um, and the importance of the activity is actually the, the act of imagining this place uh, and the making of the marks. So I, I use the term mark making rather than drawing because I want to focus away from this idea of representation towards the idea of making a mark as a trace. More similar in a way to the kind of involuntary smudges which are left on a wall when you bring bikes inside a house and the handlebars and wheels rub against the wall. Uh, or like when a boat comes into dock and the side of the boat gets scratched by the, the edge of the dock. Moreover, it can be a tool to access emotional and inner spaces to imagine a landscape. And by imagine, I don't mean to invent, although this could be part of it, um, but more to how you close your eyes and how you can see or envisage a place um, and how that place then feels to uh, that individual. And Crucially, I'm thinking about drawings which are made in this way as maps, not a map as something to find your way or to locate yourself, at least not in a physical way, but perhaps in a more emotional sense of finding yourself. Um, one of the things that actually fascinates me about Layers of London in the first place uh, is that with all its transparency layers, uh, like what you can see here on, on the screen, this is actually the, the georeferenced version of the Campbell map um, from, from the Layers of London website. It's a digital embodiment of a palimpsest. So you have all these layers which are physically there and you can mine your way through them. And I, I find that a really fascinating idea. It encapsulates the idea that the land on which we are in the present moment has both a history and a future. And it tracks how the surface of the land has changed over time but also it references the idea that there's not just a singular perspective, but rather that there are many different subjectivities and stories in any given place. So another way in which I've been thinking about a map is as a tool for discovery or reimagining landscapes. And this is an example from an artist in residence project that I did last year in Tokyo, where I invited people to join me on a, on a derive uh, around the, the local neighborhood where the, the residency was being held. And the first part of the exercise was a creating memory maps in, in the way that, that we did at the beginning in those, those last two examples, drawing on the hands uh, and uh, people, people drawing uh, what they could feel, the memories which were being translated. Um, and uh, then it ended up with this, this kind of crazy map, which you can see at the top. I mean, map, I call it map, but it's, it's I don't know, a drawing, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then taking this in a sort of situationist uh, type of uh, fashion by using that drawing as a way to navigate our way around the neighborhood and explore things. So, uh, for instance, uh, the group who, who would go on this, this sort of walk together would decide, I want to go and visit that yellow blob up there and we would mark on the places that we wanted to visit um, and then use this map and sort of interpret the lines and, and, and marks as streets, as items that we saw around on the streets um, and, you know, really interpreting these marks in, in a fairly fun and playful way, but, but using that absurd kind of activity as a way of um, 
discovering what there is in the real landscape. Uh, what does that yellow blob mean in reality? What is that blue uh, swirl? What could that be? And then when we got to these certain points that we wanted to get to, um, I asked people to think about something they knew about that place in, in real life uh, from the past uh, or from their own personal experience and also something that they imagined or hoped for the future of that place, which could be something real or it could be something, again, fairly absurd. So I'm, I'm really interested in this idea of absurdity and, and um, kind of, yeah, in, in imperfection uh, in a way in, in map making. And um, one, of the, one of the key aspects of the, the unmapping project is also working together with people participating. Um, sort of multiple minds uh, joined together because I really like to to encapsulate this idea of multiplicity and also multi-temporality in places by, by creating maps that layer many different stories uh, and, and experiences on top of each other. So this this example that you see here is, is a sort of precursor to the Camberwell chalk map. Um, although I think my original inspiration for this actually came from the film, Lars von Trier's film Dogville, um, in which, um, if you've seen it, the the um, the film set is laid out on a on a in a in a uh, film uh, studio with chalk lines marked on the floor, which symbolise the village in which this this whole story takes place. This mining village. Um, um, and I, I was always fascinated by, by that idea of a, of a map um, sort of being open uh, and something that you could actually be in uh, at the same time as imagining it. Um, but anyway, this is uh, Tower Hamlet's Shuffle Festival in 2015. And uh, I asked people to imagine their childhood home, uh, wherever it may have been, whether that was London or, or elsewhere. Um, and then to draw it onto a fictional fantasy map of London. I called it London. Um, and they could draw their house wherever they wanted to. Uh, they could draw it as a floor plan uh, or as a, um, as a sort of 2D representation um, uh, from, from the front of the house. Um, but, and then they could place their, their drawing onto the, 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 the map wherever they wanted it to. So, by the end it would sort of emerge into this imagined city um, with imaginary streets and the premise behind this is that we everybody who was there at the time we are all here now in this place and all of our combined histories and stories make this place what it is uh, which i thought was quite an apt metaphor for uh, london and i mean this is tower hamlet so a uh, very diverse area um, and what I find interesting about this is if you look at it from at the top level, you see lots of very organized uh, sort of floor plan drawings um, of, of the houses, obviously the, the adults who could reach higher up. And then as you work your way lower down, then they become more kind of chaotic and uh, sort of, yeah, the, the, the sort of more flat uh, images of, of houses. And then you go all the way down to the bottom and you get all these scribbles. Um, with uh, you know the, the younger children uh, who who were participating, so I, the, the map also has those layers as well. Um, so these these participatory art activities that I they do, they're they're often for groups of people who don't know each other, and they're often as a way of getting people to talk about places um, to each other. And Normally, that means that the marks that people make during these activities are totally absurd and unplaceable and unrecognizable. It's lots of scribbles and just very, you know, personal gestures, which mean probably a lot to the person who's made it, but uh, don't necessarily communicate anything. But there are also sometimes when people know each other uh, that they are able to, that, that work, people who have a shared memories together, shared memories of, of places. Um, that they actually recognise things. So this is an example of, of two friends of mine who, who participated uh, in, in the, the exercise. And it turned out that by doing this touch drawing exercise, they were both uh, visualising the same place, the same memory of a, of a particular moment. And then afterwards, when they talked about it, they were like, yeah, was that the thing you were talking about? Yeah, it was. And then, so it was really, really funny. Um, the, I, I did this also another time with a, um, 
uh, a couple who had come to a workshop um, and it turned out that the, the, the memory of the place that they were describing was actually the day of their wedding and they were able to guess from the, the touch exercise that uh, the, the memory that was being described was that moment. They're like, oh my God, it was that. Yeah, it was that. Anyway, so you get these, these kind of funny moments sometimes. Um, but the thinking behind the Camberwell map, this is, this is the, the, the Camberwell chalk map from, from last year, is that it would show some of the many and diverse perspectives that my neighbourhood embodies, um, because I'm, I'm Camberwell local. Um, and the, the project came about as a, an open call for the Camberwell Arts Festival in uh, last year. The call was for projects that would involve local community and be relevant in some ways to Camberwell. And I had this idea of making a giant chalk map that people could get involved with and draw on the places in the neighborhood that were personally significant to them, focusing on individual perspectives that would then all become layered and overlapped on this map. Um, everyone who came to the festival, both kids and adults, were invited to take part. Um, and uh, originally I actually wanted it to be a, a huge chalk drawing on the, on the floor, on the, the, the sort of piazza, which is outside the Civic Centre. If you know Camberwell, it's, a big, it's now um, abandoned. But, um, but then I wanted to get a drone to film the whole process from above. So I wanted it to be huge, you know, maybe like 30, 40 metres, uh, well, maybe not 30 metres seems more reasonable. Anyway, a big, a big map. Um, but that was unfeasible um, also because of, um, uh, security uh, reasons and um, uh, what's it called? With using a drone, there were there were issues uh, to do with that. Anyway, lots of logistical factors to make that not possible. So in the end, I opted to do it on these blackboards on the green. And one of the first challenges that I faced was thinking about how big the map should be um, and how to fit it into the space that was available. Um, in, in the cases that I've spoken about before, um, you know, rooms, these are sort of fairly clearly defined spaces. A room, um, even a street is a, is a fairly defined space. But when you think about a whole neighborhood, uh, that becomes much more complicated. Um, and I was asking myself, where are the edges of Camberwell? And how do I even ensure that people who would come to this event uh, would even have an experience in Camberwell? Um, and, and not an experience, you know, some, somewhere else where they live. Uh, and, and how would I then break it to a child who lives in Elephant and Castle? No, you can't draw because that's too far away. I, I, I didn't want to create some sort of um, Camberwell elitism. So I wasn't really sure exactly how to, to do the, the, the boundaries, but I, I Google mapped Camberwell and it came up with this shape. Um, and Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what this shape refers to, whether this is a, you know, in, in terms of its municipal status. Um, and if anybody knows, I'd, I'd love to, to know uh, exactly how this shape comes about. Um, because Camberwell is a slightly confusing place because it's spread over two boroughs, Southwark and Lambeth. Um, and it, it, as far as I've understood, this shape is the combination of two Southwark wards uh, with a sort of slice from a Lambeth ward, but not the whole part of the ward. So I'm not sure exactly what that, how it comes about, but um, I, I decided to use Google Maps definition of, um, of this shape for convenience, um, because it meant that I could place three plywood panels next to each other uh, in order to create a rectangular shape. Uh, sort of fits it quite nicely. Uh, and also very conveniently, Camberwell Green is right in the center, uh, which also happened to be the location of the Campbell Arts Festival, so bang in the middle. Um, but um, people, I, I didn't really plan the map out too much. I allowed people to decide for themselves where to put their own streets, where to put um, places that were important to them uh, on, on the map. And it meant that people who, were, who, who came first uh, were also responsible for deciding on the scale of the map. Um, and um, I did um, I did write um, north, south, east and west um, on the, uh, the, the board and also direct, sort of direction arrows pointing to Peckham, Elephant and Castle, Brixton and Vauxhall on the four sides. And I drew the square of Camberwell in the middle. 
uh, as well as marking the, the main roads on and the, the train line. Um, but um, yeah, as I said, the the rest of it was um, was was left up to people to decide uh, for themselves. But what that meant is that when one point became fixed, um, other things would sort of develop in relation to that point. So you know, it became really confusing to, to find out where uh, where things were. Um, and certain, some people didn't necessarily notice that there was a street that was already marked on. Um, so then they would put it on again and then, you know, the whole map would keep on sort of shifting in different directions. So there was two Southampton ways. Uh, there, are, there are two Brunswick parks. You can kind of see in this picture uh, here, there is uh, Brunswick Park and this one is also Brunswick Park. So this has been interpreted as Vicarage Grove, um, but also as uh, Ben Hill Road uh, before that. So, um, yeah, it, you get these sort of funny, funny, uh, absurd moments. Um, and I thought this was quite interesting as a metaphor, thinking about Campbell or Green being in the middle, um, since places are often defined by their central points or capital city. Um, but the further you go away from that central point, the more things change and morph into whatever is nearby. Um, and that was also happening on, you know, on, on the map, the further away you get from the centre, it, it became more chaotic. Um, and this is, this is one of the drawings towards the edge of the map, one of those more chaotic uh, bits, which, uh, in, in fact, as the, 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 the day progressed, things did become kind of more chaotic, especially when there was lots of kids and everyone was kind of drawing frantically which, you know, if you give a, uh, a child a box of colourful chalks and a giant blank blackboard, then, you know, of course they will go freestyle. Um, but it, which made it very fun, but also difficult to connect to, to, to sort of rein it back to the, the, the task. Um, but um, but w w what I found sort of interesting with, with this is that you, you again, with, as with the, the Camberwell, uh, sorry, with the Tower Hamlets childhood homes map, you see this interesting balance between adults uh, interpretations and children so here you have uh, just note the the best sourdough bread this side of heaven the cable bakery uh, next to this sort of crazy spiral uh, thing which you know what could it be um, and the physical nature of chalk uh, the way that it rubs out uh, also added to this idea of a map as a palimpsest or pentimento because as people walked over, they smudged what was there before, drew on top of it, and in some cases erasing uh, what was there in order to make space for their own drawing. I had two types of chalk pen, uh, dry chalk and liquid chalk, and the liquid chalk remained whilst the dry chalk was rubbed off in many places, which added to this idea of layers of a city. Some things remain from the past, uh, some things are hidden or erased. Um, I had no idea how this would really turn out, to be honest, um, but I was hoping for some specific spots that people would draw on, like private things where, you know, this is where I had my first kiss, uh, this is where I always stand with my mates, or that's where I go to buy drugs, you know, this, this kind of stuff. But then I realised that people would probably not want to map these things, that's fairly private. Um, but there are some things which are kind of cryptic, which I, which I find interesting, like this one says drums uh, down at the, the bottom uh, right hand corner here, which you know could mean a place where they have drum lessons, uh, it could be where they hear the sound of drums, um, or maybe it's the location of their church. And I really like this kind of ambiguity um, that, that appears in, in, in the maps, but, but also these very personal details, uh, like uh, of, of places that, that, are, that are, you know, very but yeah, personal to people. Um, like this one, you have Jamal's house, uh, which is marked there in the center. And uh, you can also see uh, that there is um, Fergus and Becky's house, um, which is next to that. Uh, as well as Zoe uh, up here. Um, and um, here you can see a, uh, a child's writing, uh, which is, which you can make out here. It says play, playground, spelled with a W. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is again in this sort of m mass of, of wherever this could be, uh, but, but still the, the, the places are actually somehow related to I think this is Myatt's Fields Park, you hit, have here the tennis courts that somebody has drawn by. So, you know, there, there are these 
slight anchors that bring it back to reality. Um, and, and you can see this actually when you when you look on the, the layers of London website, when you use the, the transparency slider, you can sort of see here the Ebony Horse um, Pony Club, uh, which is down in Brixton, which down, down here at the bottom, you can actually see here is Brixton. And, uh, and then you have this, which I don't know, it could be a house or it could be, again, a layout of the park. Um, you know, it could be anything. Um, and the, the proportions are all over the place. Um, but then also things that are, that are very representational, like here you have this uh, drawing of somebody's house or an apartment block where they put all the balconies on and, and this one as well, um, which is, you know, a, a row of, of terraced houses, but made in this really beautiful way. Um, and, uh, and, and another house, which I, I particularly like this one. I think it says Fred, uh, Fred's house, but Fred's house also has an arm, which sort of reaching out and sort of marked right in the middle with a circle, it's like, that's my house. Um, and, uh, and then you also have these sort of more experiential elements, like the, the, the plane flying overhead. We live right underneath the, the Heathrow flight path. Uh, so you get that sort of sound of the, the plane. So it brings in another sort of more sensory element uh, to, to it. Um, also more sort of landmarks, uh, the South London Gallery, the old fire station, um, and uh, historical places which no longer exist. So there was really a range of people who came to participate from you know, kids, kids and adults, and some people who really wanted to share a story about, about history, some people who wanted to share a story uh, about uh, their own experience of what they think of Camberwell. Um, but one person in particular you know, was, was very active in mar marking on some more historical moment, uh, points. So here's the, the former Melhuish uh, flower factory. And in a previous slide, there was the, the Kipling um, cake factory, uh, which you might have noticed. Um, and um, you also have here Sultan Street, which is one of uh, London's most notorious slums uh, during the Victorian period. Um, and uh, here, this one, Mrs. Richardson's shop, which relates to the infamous Richardson gang, uh, who used to live in Camberwell in this house here in Addington Square. Uh, that was their sort of club house. Um, and down here, you can see the a severed hand, which represents some of the kind of nasty antics that, they, that this gang used to do. Um, and then right next to that you have here, I, I just no noticed this the other day when I was looking through the slides, these, these are, this is, I, I believe, is the, um, there was a, a playground which was, which was built and it was, it had just been built last year, um, just before last summer and they have these sort of uh, hexagonal uh, play shapes, um, so that must have been quite an exciting moment for the child that, that drew this. This picture and this one here with the, the tennis courts I wanted to just draw your attention to to that but it's it's fascinating there's all these little details that, that you that you find uh, the more the more you look at it um, and places which are hidden uh, like the the Cold War bunker which uh, there's, there's a former bunker that is down the road in, in Camberwell which was uh, built for the uh, the town people from the town hall uh, to escape to in the case of a nuclear uh, attack um, which is now abandoned. Uh, silly stuff like fart gas um, and uh, aliens invading, everything's in there. Uh, and also things which are marked on the map, but they're probably actually somewhere else. So here there's a submarine, which is more or less in the, the region of um, Myatt's Fields Park, but this submarine, there's no submarine there, but there is a submarine in a playground in Brixton, so it's sort of displaced. Uh, and there is this traffic light here, which uh, which is marked on next to Vestry Road, um, but uh, there is no traffic light on Vestry Road. There is, however, a traffic light on Camberwell Grove uh, over here, which is sort of fairly recent that they put that traffic light in. But again, an example of where things have been misplaced um, but still you know if you really look and if you know the area then then you would be able to figure figure it out um, and also 
very positive messages. Uh, somebody who says they, who's not local, but wanted to, to put it on the map, uh, that they love Camberwell and they wish that they lived here. Um, so the important thing about this project is that it was a way of bringing people together. And as with my earlier projects, it's a, a trace of an encounter, a meeting of people on the green, and more about the, the process of, of sharing stories um, and, and meeting people. And as well, empowering people to really take uh, an active participation in their own neighborhoods and being active, active players in the, the role of actually imagining the place. I am here, this is my, my place, I'm marking myself on the map. Um, and I had no you know, grand ideas that this would be um, possible to, to make as a, a geo-reference layer on, on layers of London. I, I sort of whimsically uh, sent an email one day uh, asking, hey, would you like to um, uh, geo-reference this for the for layers of London? And I was very surprised that that was actually made a reality. So I'm super grateful for that and, and really, really excited to, to see it, uh, you know, have a, have a new a new life. Uh, I think it's probably the, the the least accurate map on the site and probably the one made by the most pairs of hands. Um, and um, it no longer exists actually. It's, I, I, I chopped it up uh, into small pieces uh, after photographing it and since then I've been using it to make paintings um, which um, this is an example of, of one of them. Um, and what I wanted to do was, was sort of continue this idea of layers of palimpsest, uh, pentimento, layering over, keeping the past traces. Uh, and, and you can see, this is a detail here on the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, you can see a little trace of, of the drawing underneath because uh, it's all done with varnish and um, oil paint with transparent layers. So you can see, um, see what's underneath. So, yeah, that's that's more or less what I what I wanted to uh, to talk about. Um, and um, thank you for um, thank you to Layers of London. Thanks to Adam for inviting me for being here, and and particularly thanks to Camberwell Arts. Uh, I don't know if anyone from Camberwell Arts is listening, but thank you so much uh, for yeah making this thing become a reality in the first place. So thank you. Should I? stop sharing my screen and maybe we'll go to some questions. Great. Thank you so much, Kimball. I, I can't tell you how much I love this layer. And it's, it's such a nice contrast to some of the historical maps that we, we've got on layers of London. Um, and I, I mean, your explanation of it as well has just added to its, its enjoyment. Um, I, if anyone does have a question, please do feel free to put it in the Q&A or the chat. Um, but I might kick things off because um, I'm really interested in, in the crowdsourcing nature of, of this whole project and all your work really. And I'm interested to see whether, what the initial reaction was when you set up that big blankish blackboard on the floor and whether there was a different reaction from children as there was to adults mm. um, and who sort of embraced the projects initially. Yes. Well, that's, 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 yeah, I, I, I think, Adults often are very skeptical about these kinds of um, things. It was, and I, I think a lot of adults sort of thought that it was not something for them. Um, I think that ultimately, from the beginning, I was I was sort of thinking about it from a, from a, from a, from an adult perspective, uh, from a mapping perspective, from a sort of theoretical perspective, um, and sort of hoping that adults would would get involved uh, to, to the level that eventually they did, but they needed a bit more persuading and, and I noticed a lot of I mean the Camberwell uh, Arts Festival is is a very family you know oriented event anyway so there was lots of families with kids um, and it was uh, a, a, a fun, I, I also sort of wanted it to be that an activity that kids would get involved with um, and um, and drawing um, but but it was very much um, yeah, it, it was very much the, the, the kids who were the first ones to, to, to get involved rather than the adults. And, and the adults were the ones that needed a bit of persuading so that the adults would come up, the parents would come and, and uh, you know, some people just, because it was all open. I mean, I had some fantastic volunteers that were helping uh, with this to sort of guide it and, and uh, explain to people uh, what they had to do. Um, but that was also yeah necessary to, to keep on 
probing people like okay this is what it's all about and because a lot of people because it was all open people would just run up and kids would just take a piece of chalk and start drawing uh you know so so that's 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 why there is a lot of this sort of you know messy scribbles and, and things but but i also feel that those scribbles yeah add, add something represent sort of a child's experience uh in a way um I've noticed a lot of the time with these sort of workshops. If you if you ask a child to um, to imagine a place from the the memory, they don't really they they don't really um, how do I say they they don't rep, they don't rep really represent it. Any any drawing that if you ask a child to draw a picture of their house, it usually ends up being this sort of uh, sort of stereotypical image of of a house with with you know two windows on the top, a window on the bottom, a door, a, a roof like this. Um, and maybe they do actually really think about their, their house, but their, their idea of representing it is by a, a more of a, um, yeah, a more, a more preconceived idea of what they know as a drawing of a house rather than the... So that, that's definitely a, a challenge, uh, is actually um, doing an exercise with this, like this with, with children and sticking to the you know, the preconceived ideas that I had about it. Um, but yeah, they, but, but also kids' drawings are amazing. You know, they, they are so expressive and, and they, tell, they tell so many stories um, that one of the, the, the real kind of challenges, I think, as an adult looking at a child's drawing is trying to not interpret it. I think that's something we often tend to do. We see a, a child's drawing and, you know, we're like, oh, is that, is that a house? Is that a, and then, you know, it's better just to allow them to, because they have an idea of what it is. Um, I wish I would know about the submarine. I wish I could have asked the, but there were so many people. At some point. Um, I think there might be a, a comment about the, the submarine. Yeah. Um, oh. well, there's a link, a link here to Camberwell submarine. Oh, which, um, okay. uh, I'm not sure if I'll open that. It might, Ah, I'll mess around with the screen. I might lose it, but uh, it's. Uh, I don't know if I'm still showing my screen. I don't know if you uh, can see. No. Do you want to test it and open it and have a look? I'll just go to here and go. Share. Here we go. Can you okay. see that? This is the. It might be this one, indeed. Wow. This is. I think I know this place. I think this is. Um, this is a. Uh, I think it's the outlet of the. The uh, northern line, could it be? Oh, excellent. Wow. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 one of, it's a ventilation shaft, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, in fact, I think we have this as a record as part of a separate project on Layers of London that's mapping ventilation shafts. Fantastic. Okay, well, yeah. I've learned something. I, I was thinking it was, there is a, 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 play, a submarine play toy, uh, play, play furniture thing in a park um, down more towards uh, Brixton. I can't remember the name of the park. Uh, I thought it I thought it was that, but it could very well be be this as well. But that's yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. That, that sort of treasure treasure map uh, element. To, mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's one of the joys of the whole project and, and that particular map, where you've got you can interpret it in different ways. And to some, it could be it could be the the playground. To some, it could be that ventilation yeah. shaft. To some, it could be a reference. I don't know. It could be the yellow submarine from the Beatles for one of a better one, couldn't it? So, all kinds of, of things. Um, and and I mean that's I think that's a, another one of the, the challenges with with making a map like this, or even kind of calling it a map. You know, because it, there's no um, there's no key or a legend that, that sort of explains what what things are. It, it leaves a lot to the interpretation so if you don't actually manage to get an explanation from the person who's made it you know they may have just come quickly and, and then and then run away um then then you you also miss out on, on a lot of things um but but then you know as with a treasure i i really think about it as a, as a treasure map in a way you know that there are these things that you could discover and learn um and and invent reinvent um it's a sort of magic okay. map that's a good way to look at it, actually, yeah. Um, we, we do have another question um, from Cliff, and he says, loves the project and the visual quality. What happens when you start with a story and then seek illustration? Mm. What happens when you start with a story and then seek illustration? So th starting with a story and then illustrating the idea behind it, that's, I guess that's a very different 
way of of seeing it. Um, I I tend to um, rather than illustrating a story, um, see the the idea of drawing as a way of imagining your your own experience of a of a place. Um, it's a really interesting question. Asking them to tell a story before the drawing. Ah, I see. Yeah, asking them to tell a story before the before the drawing. I mean, that would be yes. That 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 could be an interesting way of uh, of doing it. Um, I I wonder whether or, or sort of doing it at the you know getting them to to draw. Yeah, think of think of a story about a place and then and then drawing it that, that could be an interesting workshop yeah you're giving me an idea <laughs> there you go next project <laughs> yeah. fantastic um is there anything you would have done differently um i think i probably would have um left it uh, made it a bit more uh, uh structured um i think potentially if if there was one one of the, the the real issues with it was was when things started to go very uh, freestyle, um, and um, I, I would like to have had a, a a clearer way of being able to explain to people the ideas behind the project, um, rather than just allowing it to go very very freestyle. And that that was that was really one of the the, the major challenges, uh, and I think that's that's really a, an issue with with any sort of um, kind of community-based project where you give you know open participation but you also have an idea of what you want that participation to uh, result in um, I think it's it's I, I think that yeah you you have to be able to to, to explain that in a, in a clearer way and I think at times maybe I, I didn't that wasn't as clear um, as it could have been um, so I think potentially I don't know. Thinking about a way to, to be able to explain the, to explain that more clearly to, to, to people, um, to be able to kind of hark it back to the the, the mapping elements. Just, I don't know. I, I like the freedom of it all. I think it's yeah. Uh, I, it's really hard to have that balance, you know. Yeah. And I, I I I find this with a lot of projects that I that I do. Um, that it, you know, I often because I, because a lot of my projects are, are participatory, and I I want to. Um, you know, I'm really interested in how people interpret things and, and how the project will, will develop sort of in, in its own way when you when you give a set of rules and then, you know, see how how you know, people maybe stick to those rules or, or break them. Um, but but I think that the actual you know, having the the, the, the the clarity of the exercise being very clear is, is the most important thing. Um, with that, so I think that I mean that's 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 something I tell myself after every project I do, and and then and then the next project is just as kind of chaotic and freestyle as the last one. And then it often I love it. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I think we <laughs> might uh, we might end it there. Apart from one more question, and is oh. is that a piece of the map behind you, on your wall? Is there what? Sorry, is there a piece of the map on the oh, wall no, behind yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, that's actually one of the pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I thought it might have been. Yeah, that's cool. marvelous. Well, I think that's a, a fantastic way to end this. Um, and just to say a huge thank you, Kimball. That was really fascinating. Um, and thank you to everyone who's attended. Um, this has been recorded, so um, we'll be placing it on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. And, um, and if anyone would like to share their picture that they drew at the start, um, as Kimball said, please do feel, for, uh, feel free to tweet that and uh, include Layers of London and uh, Kimball, uh, our, the hashtag Layers of London as well. And, um, and we'll share those on our own accounts too. So um, thank you all, have a good afternoon and uh, see you for the next one, take care.